If we think about animals on planet Earth, we would think about organisms like ourselves. Red blood, one heart, and four limbs. Although this is true for mammals, much of the other animals have similar traits, at least red blood. However, my personal favorite class of animals, cephalopoda, seems far from what we consider normal Earth animals. They're like aliens. They have up to 10 tentacles and arms, they have blue blood and three hearts, and some even have nine brains. The reason why cephalopods have blue blood is because of the environment they live in. Although the blood serves the same function of transporting oxygen, their blood contains hemocyanin dissolved in a plasma instead of hemoglobin in blood cells. Note here that hemocyanin is copper-based instead of iron-based, which gives it the blue color and the high viscosity. Now, hemocyanin does a significantly worse job than hemoglobin at binding with oxygen molecules, but when it's in colder water with less oxygen, it works better than hemoglobin. Most cephalopods live in cold, dark places in the ocean, and in places with low oxygen levels, they need to do their best to preserve what they have. For example, the vampire squid lives at the depth of 600 to 1200 meters below the surface, which is called the oxygen minimal layer, with less than 5% oxygen concentration. Unlike its name, the vampire squid is not a predator. It moves extremely slowly and it feeds with a filament that catches microorganisms. It is preserving its oxygen by almost passively feeding and moving very slowly. Cephalopods have closed circulatory systems, meaning that their blood is sealed in blood vessels. They also need three hearts to pump the blood through their bodies. They have a systemic heart and two branchial hearts. Our journey starts here with a drop of oxygenated blood. The systemic heart, also known as the main ventricle, is the biggest heart. It is shaped like a triangle, with the aorta on its top and two efferent vessels on the bottom of each side. The aorta sends out the oxygenated blood, same as humans, and the efferent vessels receive oxygenated blood from the gills, like our pulmonary veins. Instead of having multiple chambers, cephalopods simply have valves at the end of the blood vessels to stop the blood from backflowing. Both a similarity and a difference. As I've mentioned, their blood is very viscous, so we can infer that the blood will lose a lot of its kinetic energy on its trip around the body. That's where the branchial hearts come in. The branchial hearts are simpler in structure compared to the systemic heart. It only has two openings. From the vena cava, the deoxygenated blood first enters the kidneys for the removal of any unwanted materials. After it leaves the kidneys, the blood enters the branchial hearts. The branchial hearts then pump the blood into afferent vessels, then into the gills, where the blood gets oxygenated. Other than that, the branchial hearts serve the same function as our right ventricle, which pumps deoxygenated blood to the lungs. In our bodies, veins merge into the two vena cava, and in cephalopods, the vena cava splits into two vessels. Another difference is that our kidneys are supplied with oxygenated blood instead of deoxygenated blood that's a story for another day since it relates to the urinary system. Cephalopods are not very athletic compared to other sea creatures. Because of the viscous blood and the low oxygen efficiency of hemocyanin, cephalopods cannot afford a prolonged period of physical labor. That's why squids are experts at jet propulsion and why octopuses are masters of disguise. Cephalopods are weird, but they are absolutely adorable and intriguing creatures. This is personal opinion, I just like cephalopods very much. Thank you for watching.